And now, the general weather around Alaska. Welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan, coming to you from the National Weather Service on this Saturday, April 6, 2024. And if you'd like additional information on top of what I provide in this YouTube video, you can go to weather.gov. That is the National Weather Service's online presence. It'll bring you to a map of the continental U.S with Hawaii and Alaska to the lower left and uh, little tabs here for the territories. You point and click anywhere though on this map, it'll pull up a very specific forecast for a gridded location and give you any relevant watches, warnings, or advisories that are currently in effect. And taking a look at the, the map here across the continental U.S., we got a couple things coming up. First of all, uh, the big eclipse is tomorrow, early mid-afternoon from Texas across the nation's midsection, then coming up across northern New England. So what we find, frost advisories, freeze warnings, parts of the Ohio, Tennessee Valley into the Carolinas. Back west, all of this magenta and uh, kind of... Uh, orangish yellow fire weather critical fire weather conditions for windy dry warm conditions and high wind advisories and high wind warnings are in effect here for uh, the midsection there across the plains dangerous fire weather situation shaping up uh, for monday across this region also some winter weather advisories winter storm warnings back here through portions of the central and northern rockies but up here in alaska we're watching a low that's currently in the lower Bering Sea, a secondary low is going to form in the front, push across the Gulf here as we go through Sunday into Monday. So that means more precipitation will be moving into the Panhandle, northeastern Gulf Coast as we go through the day tomorrow. There is a shot of late season Arctic air that will be working its way southward from the Chukchi Sea. And that'll be pushing a cold front through the Bering Strait tomorrow, Sunday, and then all the way down across the Alaska Peninsula by Monday. And with these uh, brisk north-northeast winds, that colder air, you know, quickly head south-southeastward, and there could be some areas of extreme uh, freezing spray uh, off of Kuskokwim and uh, Bristol Bays there in the southeast Bering Sea. Anchorage, as I mentioned yesterday, has now had the third snowiest winter on record, standing at 130.5 inches. Anchorage just needs four more inches of snow to tie its all-time record of 134.5 inches set in the winter of 2011-2012. And there is a potential some light snow could happen around uh, Tuesday into Wednesday. And then the big solar eclipse there in the lower 48 tomorrow. Unfortunately, many areas are going to be mostly cloudy. There's only one location now that looks like it's going to be uh, the place to be for viewing this eclipse, and I'll show you that here in just a moment. So a couple of the uh, webcams across the state, way up in the northwest, no attack, partly sunny, 10 above. You're going to have a cold front passing through your area tomorrow, and that's going to shift winds around to the uh, northeast north and pull down even colder air. Temperatures are going to get back down below zero. And then that cold air is just going to ride down along the west side of the state, down uh, across the Alaska Peninsula on Monday. Port Alexander there in the um, western outer uh, region of the Panhandle is enjoying partly sunny skies, temperatures around 40, but another round of rain and breezy conditions will be moving into the Panhandle come Sunday, especially Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. So get ready for another round of precipitation. Not a big storm, but just some more rain. Higher elevations as you get up toward the uh, Haynes Klondike highways could pick up a slushy, maybe one to three inches of snowfall. But here's something we haven't seen in a long time. The uh, hazardous weather map for watches, warnings, advisories, special weather statements. Nothing on there right now. No major storms. The last thing we had was the high wind warning uh, that impacted the central Aleutians. ADAC did manage to get a wind gust to 66 miles an hour, but... Uh, that's that's pretty tame by their standards when it comes to Bering Sea storms. So let's take a look though. Here is the eclipse path. This is an image provided uh, by NASA. The eclipse runs from uh, across uh, Mexico from uh, Mazatlan, Mazatlan all the way on up uh, across Texas to the Ohio Valley to near uh, Niagara Falls and then up into northern New England. Right now, things I've been looking at very closely because I have some people near and dear to me that are gonna be trying to see this thing. I've been trying to help them hone in on where to go to have the best viewing weather. 
Right now, there's going to just a tremendous amount of moisture returning from the western Gulf up across Texas, and mid-upper level winds are going to spread high clouds rapidly up through the Ohio Valley. So right now, the place that's going to have the clearest skies for viewing is here in northern New England. Uh, the, the northern parts of uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, on up into Maine will be the best viewing where skies will be clearest. Uh, as you go southwestward, you're going to see an increase in high clouds and then thicker clouds down here through the middle Mississippi Valley all the way back through Texas with showers and even some thunderstorms breaking out. So unfortunately, people here may not even be able to view the eclipse other than the effects. It's going to get fairly uh, twilight-ish. It gets dark, not night dark, but it gets dark during one of these. And uh, so again, this happens in the... Uh, uh, early mid-afternoon, like around 2, 3 o'clock local time. Alaska is going to be just on the edge. Southeast Alaska, the panhandle will be just within the penumbra. That's the lightest shadow, and uh, it, that won't even be perceptible. But uh, this is what we call the umbra, the deep, dark shadow, and this is the place to be if skies are clear. But unfortunately, a, a good portion of that path will have clouds to deal with. Solar activity is currently on the low side, but there's still always the potential for high latitude Arctic auroras uh, remain possible. Um, not anything of note recently. And new moon is tomorrow, given the fact we have that eclipse, new moon uh, at uh, 1021 a.m. Alaska daylight time. And the, uh, another thing to note, the Alaska Aurora viewing season, uh, those of us here in the high latitudes of the north, will be ending soon later this month as simply we're getting too much daylight now. Nighttime is shrinking and uh, daylight is expanding. So we'll have to wait again until some point uh, later in August uh, when the uh, Aurora scene starts up again. So we got about another week or two. Uh, we'll see if we can get some uh, clear skies in, though. We are going to be heading toward full moon in a couple of weeks, so not the best uh, ideal conditions for viewing the aurora or doing any type of uh, sky gazing. Well, looking at the uh, satellite imagery, here is this strong low north of ADAC uh, as of early this morning. When I put the map into motion, notice this low is heading southeastward. It'll cut across the eastern Aleutians, the tip of the Alaska Peninsula later tonight then re-emerge down here in the northern uh, Pacific. Uh, frontal system ahead of it, we're spinning up a new low right about here south of Kodiak Island. That low is going to pull up into the central gulf. And then as the cold front up here, you can see hints of it, as that cold front races south, that shot of colder Arctic air comes through the Bering Strait tomorrow, and then we'll wrap all the way down along the southwest coast and the Alaska Peninsula as we go through Monday. That cold air is going to come down and wrap in behind this low, and it's going to tend to pull that low back toward the western gulf, maybe just off the Kenai coastline. That's what could spread more snow back up toward Anchorage Tuesday into Wednesday. Not a guarantee, but at least it's a chance uh, for Anchorage to make a run at second or maybe even first place with season snowfall. The Panhandle, though, will see more uh, precipitation moving into the area for Sunday into Sunday night. And there could be some light accumulations of snow, especially as you get higher up in elevation and in northern parts of the, the Panhandle there along sections of the Haines and Klondike highways. The interior is also going to see kind of showery, some snow showers uh, out, out and about there as we uh, go through the next couple of days. By, uh, so today, here's the map. Here we have that developing low. We have that main low that's filling in now and going to cross uh, the eastern portion of the Aleutians later tonight, early on uh, Sunday. So here it is by 4 a.m. The low is crossing the eastern Aleutians. The new low is pushing out up into the lower central gulf. And we have weak trough lingering along the Alaska, um, Alaska range on up into northwest Canada. Here comes that cold front plunging southward. And tomorrow afternoon, that colder air will begin to race more quickly southward. And we will find here's the low, that secondary low in the Gulf with the front. That's what's going to bring uh, another round of rain and some snow, especially as you get up in elevation here across the Panhandle, northeastern Gulf. Winds won't be all that strong. I, I mean, typical like small craft advisory, low gale force and wind. So no biggie given what we've seen so much of this winter season. And then by the time we get into Monday, that cold air is already down, cutting across the Alaska Peninsula. This area here of the Bering Sea, just off of Kuskokwim and Bristol Bays, in this area, in this corner, southeast corner, there could be some extreme uh, freezing spray. Conditions are very favorable for that. And then 
The secondary low, which has been the main low, is kind of sitting here in the north central Gulf, but secondary low is going to be try to form back toward uh, the Kenai Peninsula. And this whole thing could pull back to the west as this colder air wraps in around and just underneath that low. So we'll keep an eye on that. That is what will give areas of the Kenai and perhaps even toward the Anchorage Bowl a chance of some light to maybe even moderate snow. But uh, that's the way things are shaping up. No real warm-ups on the way. Temperatures a bit below freezing at Petersburg and on up toward Juneau. Near freezing, Ketchikan, uh, down toward Craig. Uh, teens in the Copper River Basin, just below freezing up around Anchorage. Temperatures could get up near 40. Anchorage Bowl, 42 Talkeetna, even 40 there within Gulkana, Glen Allen, and then uh, 40s. It could be an isolated 50 degree reading down toward Klawak or Craig, but otherwise expect showers, a little breezier conditions on Sunday, Monday. Similarly, not quite as cold here. Temperatures stay above freezing in the panhandle uh, Sunday night into Monday morning. Teens again in the Copper River Basin, maybe a little below freezing across south central uh, interior areas. And then temperatures on Monday will be a little cooler, could be in the 40s here, most of the panhandle, though trying to pop up to 49 there at Skagway. Uh, a little cooler in through the Anchorage Bowl, up through the Matsu Valley, 35 to 40 degrees for highs. Notice though, the colder air, I've been talking about this, there's a, a, a shot of colder air up here in the Chuck GC. That's gonna race southward. And we see lows below zero along the Northwest Arctic coast, even the north side of the Seward Peninsula. And by the time we get in Sunday afternoon, notice the high temperatures. We could see some readings, upper 30s, even lower 40s, uh, Eagle down toward Northway, but the colder air is beginning to advance Sunday afternoon through the Bering Strait. So readings stay only in the single digits above zero there along the northwest side there of the Seward Peninsula. And then colder temperatures Monday morning, notice the expanding below zero temperatures here along the northwest, west central side of the state, that colder air is plunging southward. A little cooler even in through the interior, though temperatures again, Monday afternoon still could be back up around 40 here along the Elkan border, uh, upper 30s or so at Fairbanks, but daytime highs definitely chillier there along the Seward Peninsula and extending down along the uh, YK deltas. And here across the Alaska Peninsula Sunday morning, temperatures uh, are gonna be generally just above freezing. 20s here as you go up the Kuskokwim uh, River. Uh, daytime high still around 40, Dillingham over toward Kodiak City on Sunday. But the colder air will begin to advance southward. You'll notice your uh, north winds picking up. And then for Monday morning, we got lows to zero. Uh, Imanak, and then also five above through Shellac, or through uh, Tolan Strait in these areas. Uh, and then below freezing along the eastern Aleutians, tip of the Alaska Peninsula. Monday afternoon highs, single digits here along the uh, lower Yukon. And readings generally only near freezing across the Alaska Peninsula in through the eastern Aleutians. So looking at temperatures as we head through mid-month, April 12th through the 16th, the temperature outlook costs for readings to average below normal southeast mainland in through the panhandle and near normal across much of the central, northern, western side of the state in through the eastern Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula, especially up there through the Yukon Valley. So what that means is we're not gonna get enough warm air around to begin river breakup season. River breakup will be delayed because of this pattern. No chances of that happening through mid-month. So pushing it out at least at earliest later on in April. So we'll have to see how temperatures behave once we get beyond this time frame. Uh, and precipitation wise, still a bit above normal. Around Prince William Sound, Anchorage, south side of the central eastern Alaska range into the northern panhandle. So there's still that potential, enough cold air left that maybe Anchorage can get that extra snow to break the all time record. We'll have to wait and see. but. At least the next upcoming chance looks like Anchorage could get some light accumulating snow a little bit at least, maybe around Tuesday into early Wednesday of next week. So stay tuned to later forecast.